Um, welcome everyone, as Mark said, that's Mark Sullivan. My name is Michael Kester, and I'm the president and curator of the Hancock County Historical Society. We're actually broadcasting from my dining room, but I have a backdrop of the museum for you to look at. Uh, this is our fourth webinar this year. So we're still learning. Some things are a little rough, but hopefully you'll have an enjoyable experience. It's slightly different this time because instead of a speaker, we'll be showing a video. Uh, small museums and featured exhibits. That's equals limited space, tight budgets, and small staff. Every exhibit, including a feature exhibit, starts with an idea. Then it goes through a process until it goes live to the public. Tonight, I would like to share with you the world premiere documentary video of sorts just recently completed that will take you through the process that we went through. Our featured exhibit for 2022 in our facility is called Lawn and Lace. It opened in April and has been very popular. You will not be viewing the full exhibit in the video, only sneak peeks. It's just a teaser as we would like to encourage people to be guests and see our exhibit in person. The Hancock County Historical Society contacted a local videographer, Andy Wilkins, to shoot this video using our specifications. We received a grant from the Hancock County Tourism Commission to fund this project. We thank them. In a moment, I'll start the video after after a couple technical settings. And as I said uh, earlier, for the best viewing experience, turn up your sound and make sure you have your screen on full screen. Feel free to make any comments with the Zoom chat function at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them at the end of the video. Now I'll, I'll return after that to answer any of your questions from the comments that we received. So we will see you in about 16 minutes and three seconds. In the chapel in the park. We are in the basement museum storage area and this is where we start when we're looking for items to be in the featured exhibit and this is what we call COVID storage or cold storage. We spent a lot of time in here during COVID trying to determine uh, what things needed to be inventoried and what pieces needed to be cataloged and when that process occurred, we came across some older dresses from the early 1900s. And in particular, we came across what we're now calling the Irene Huntington Hill dress. And we had to determine if it fit the time period that we had. On top of that, we were coming across several of the same time period. So we decided that we had a a featured exhibit possibly here that could turn into a textile exhibit. With that said, we, would, we got in here and we identified uh, the type of fabric that it was. Here's an example of our textiles that are a very fine cotton called lawn, which include machine-made laces. And we always handle items uh, with nitrile gloves. Even if I wash my hands, five minutes later, 
there's oil on my hands and that can harm the fabric or whatever I'm touching whether it be an old manuscript or a photo so we would go in here and we would try to find if this article or this artifact has been numbered and normally artifacts are numbered in a trinomial fashion which would be like the year and the numerical uh, day that it might have came in and how many artifacts were in that particular collection these artifacts that we had were numbered and so we got lucky we were able to match it up to a card and this is just a copy that we had in our file cabinet and it says it came in on 1990 it was the first article that came in that year and it was nine of a collection of maybe at least nine and maybe more it was donated by uh, uh, E.C. Huntington and it was worn by Irene Huntington Hill and she wore it on her eighth grade graduation day so now we have what we need to correctly identify it with a donor and who wore it. So now we're ready for research. Person, you can start with newspapers.com and that's where we did start to find out who Irene Huntington Hill was. She lived a very long life. She lived to 98 and she passed away in 1990. And uh, she was a, a part of the DAR uh, she went to Franklin College, and then it gives her relatives. So now we have a story going on, and a history, and a person that's identified that yes, they lived in Hancock County, and so our artifact fits the criteria for being in the featured exhibit. This is just one of three dresses that were finally determined that they could be in the featured exhibit. And so we went ahead and we took those upstairs and we continued the curating process. Well, we've left the storage room and we came upstairs to right outside my office and we're getting ready to take a look at the artifacts that we want to be in the featured exhibit. And with that said, uh, we are a small museum and not only am I the president of the Hancock County Historical Society, but I am the curator. Larger museums normally have a person that is doing both of those jobs or even a team of people doing curating for just textiles. We don't have that luxury here and most small museums will understand what I'm saying. Uh, so let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at the uh, the fabric that we brought up from downstairs. It's the Huntington Hill dress and we're going to examine it for a label and a trinomial number check the condition. The article artifact that I found uh, is in relatively good condition. Uh, the lace is not torn. It's not terribly discolored. It could use a light wash and it probably would be safe to do a soak in an archival uh, cleaner. But it does not have a number in it. And so based on the the information that I found, which is from an index card that we have, I know what the number is and what it is and the name of the donor and the year. So what I'm going to do is, what I would do is take this, it's a, it's a cotton uh, trim, we would cut it down to size about that long, and then we take an archival pen, and this is a uh, a micron pen, it's archival ink. Once you write it on there, it doesn't bleed or go onto fabrics. And then we take a couple stitches, a stitch on each end, and then it's in there semi-permanently. And it won't hurt the fabric, it can be changed. It comes out in two snips, and you can change the number if you need to. And that'll take care of getting that labeled, and we'll check and see if it needs any minor repairs that we're able to do any minor cleaning that we're able to do safely 
and then it will be ready for display. So with that said, we knew that we had three dresses that were ready to go in this display. We've already removed our previous featured exhibit, which is the Hancock County Hotels and Motels. So we have an empty space downstairs <clears throat> in the corner and we have mocked up what we wanted to use for that empty space. And in particular, we decided we would use a large mural painting, a large mural photo that we already have, and then we, we would construct the exhibit on a bias in the corner with uh, some backgrounds, uh, a title page, and an explanation placard, and some flooring, and maybe some furniture of some sort. So now we have an idea of what we want to do, uh, and so we start planning on what we need to buy if we don't have that in our supply room or, or from a previous display. Also, for the placard on the side, we decide what we want to put on that, because this is basically what the tour guide is going to be talking about. And on this particular one, we had a picture we need to get an enlargement. We have, we're going to explain what the three dresses are and where they came from. And then we're going to have a ad that we snipped out of the Hancock County Democrat newspaper. We are in the Chapel in the Park Museum basement in the formal museum. And we are in front of a 1905 large reproduction print of downtown Greenfield. We are standing east of the courthouse lawn. We are looking northwest. And in this photo in particular, it was a Chautauqua, which is a street fair that they had in Greenfield. You can see a sign here. It says September the 2nd through the 12th. And that street fair was going on at this time. Uh, that, that date and the year for this picture links it directly into our lawn and lace exhibit with the exact same time period. Well, what are elephants doing in this picture? We have elephants with little placards on the back of them. Local uh, businesses took their advertisements and paid for these to be put on them. The advertisements on the elephants came from a street fair that was in town at the time. And if you look on the tall building behind the hotel, you can see it says eight. Wallace shows and that was a low a circus that was traveling around at the time So we had a twofer in Greenfield. We had a Chautauqua or a street fair and we also had a Circus parade going on downtown. So everybody in Greenfield was downtown for this fair People were crowded quite a bit downtown. You can see them up here on the main street Which is State Road 9 and they're also along US 40 you can see people hanging out of the windows to get a good look, and some people are on the poles here also. In particular, what's interesting about this photo and links it to the featured exhibit is the ladies on the bottom down here that are wearing the lawn and lace dresses. They're wearing their dinner plate hats. The men are wearing their bowlers and summer hats, and they're all at the downtown street fair and the parade of the circus. Uh, in this particular picture, uh, we link to the Lawn and Lace slip exhibit because the women that in Greenfield that wore Lawn and Lace, they made those themselves. And they bought their uh, materials at a local lawn goods store instead of driving downtown Indianapolis, which was quite expensive. And the local uh, dry goods store was called the Spot Cash Department Store. In this photo, it's this building right here. You can see just faintly it says Spot Cash Store. This entire build building was the Spot Cash Store. Next to it was the Masonic Building. So that's where the ladies would have went to buy their lawn and lace. The women that wore lawn and lace, it, it was a new era for them and fashion changed dramatically between 1890 and 1925. 
uh, women's roles had changed also. They were working women, working women now, and they were replacing Civil War soldiers that didn't make it home. Uh, these women, they played the piano, they, they attended and performed in plays. They went and watched silent movies. They wore real swimsuits, not bathing dresses. And they went to Coney Island in their lawn dresses and their dinner plate hats. Uh, they read books by James Wickham Riley and Booth Tarkington. Uh, they followed the newspapers, just like men did, but maybe more for fashions than anything else. They attended and joined clubs and churches and the DAR. They were inspired by, by Hoosier uh, groups like T.C. Steele, William Forsythe, and Richard Gruel. And they painted and sketched for art galleries and shows. They may have traveled in a train or an interurban or went to Europe, maybe the same year that the Titanic sank in 1912. Perhaps some of them even saw the first 500 mile race in 1911. We are the Hancock County Historical Society located in Riley Park in Greenfield, Indiana. Our buildings are the chapel in the park and the old log jail. We display artifacts that we have collected mainly since 1964. The collections include many photos and in particular photos of older buildings and older businesses, schools and those buildings classes from those schools and other historical events. We also have fabrics that are part of our themed case uh, collection and those include dresses and suits, quilts and coverlets and also men's fashion. We have vintage toys and games and other artifacts representing music and sports and leisure. We always try to highlight some of our interesting artifacts each year and we roll them into a collection we call a featured exhibit or exhibition. You're welcome to stop by the chapel in the park. We are open April through October each year from 12 to 5 p.m. on Saturday and Sundays. We're available for group tours and private tours by appointment only. Please call 317-462-7780 or reach out to us on our website at HancockHistory.org. We also have a Facebook page, an Instagram page, and a YouTube channel, and those are available at our website. Thank you for watching today, and come see us. Well, there you have it. That's our uh, video quasi documentary that we were able to get funding for. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and see if we have any uh, comments in, in the chat room here. Uh, we have somebody from Walker Walk 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 Museum. And she's saying her audio is not working, but uh, I think we tested that ahead of time and everything seemed to be okay. Uh, somebody from Kokomo, somebody that's been doing museum exhibits for 35 years. Uh, some people, we had somebody email that they couldn't get in, but I'm not sure we haven't had that problem uh, lately. And uh, so I'm not sure what the deal is on that. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization, and our funding comes mainly from grants. 
we have yearly stipends from the uh, Hancock County Commissioners that we get to keep the lights on and the heat and the air conditioning running. Uh, I had a question about volunteering at the museum. Uh, you can contact us through our website. We are advertising for a tour guide for late this season and next season. We do accept volunteers to come in and do uh, paperwork or data entry. Uh, you need to call our 317-462-7780 uh, number and uh, just uh, leave a message on there and someone will get back to you. Somebody asked if we have a paid staff. Well, you're looking at this paid staff right here. <laughs> I, I get a minor stipend from the Historical Society to keep everything running. And the other paid person is the tour guide. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, thank you for attending. I, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, we put a, a lot of hard work into this project. Uh, in particular, uh, I want to thank Beth Ann uh, for uh, the, my volunteer, for her ideas and her input. It wouldn't have happened without her and Mark Sullivan for helping out with a, a Zoom call. Uh, our next event will be live and in person at the chapel in the park. The subject will be the 1950 census. It ought to be a good one. Uh, Amanda K. Ford will be the presenter. And she is the executive director of the Henry County Historical Society. And that's the county just east of us on US 40. And that happens on August the 28th at 2 p.m. at the chapel, chapel in the park. Uh, if you need any additional information about our group and what we do, please go to hancockhistory.org and you can find out everything you need. We also have a YouTube channel there and an Instagram channel, and you can post on Facebook if you like this video. We'd love to hear from you. So with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end uh, the uh, 